Hey, what's going on, family? This is your boy, Santa Camo, the pastor. And I'm with my man. What's up, y'all? This is your co host, Ricard G. Well, we here on the 33rd episode of The Real World. I know a lot of you guys are wondering, when is this season going to end? <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. Take that, take that, take that. But in all seriousness, we're going to end soon. We're probably going to end on 35, which means two more episodes of the second season. Shout out to everybody that's been watching. Shout out to everybody that's been supporting. Um, we ask you all, shout out to everybody that's made the video so far that shared the flyer. We're trying to do 60,000 diapers this time around. And how much formula, Sanders? 20,000 baby formula. 20,000 baby formulas. So we need you guys to all donate. Run to www.gofundme.com black backslash the real word. That's www gofundme.com backslash the real word we done seen all these people help their people get, go viral and help their people help the cause and do what they gotta do why can't we do the same why can't we help our people go viral why can't we help our people do great things and why can't we use our influence for good instead of for evil and you know just do great things so yeah. i'm asking all you guys share like give it to somebody you know post it text it send it tweet it Instagram it's Instagram story, Instagram TV, Facebook Live, make the video, Ricard and Sanders, the Real World Ministries is doing sixty thousand diapers, thirty thousand formula. Yes, yes, yes. I wanna give a first and foremost a um a, a shout out to everybody on um a lot of my friends um so far who've been doing videos. I have a lot of more friends who wanna do videos to promote this tour, which is very important, very essential. Um we're also waiting for the status for us to become out for profit. So hopefully by the end of this month, we should be good to go in regards to that so we can make that happen. And like I said, we'll keep you in details with um, the concert that's going to be coming along. We're trying to get things together, and um, we should be good to go and everything like that. Um, we have a guest. We got a very special guest today, guys. Introduce yourself, sir. Uh, yeah, you know, um, well, actually, people don't know. I keep saying, you know, as if I'm a rapper or something like that. But uh, my name is also Ricard. Yeah, Ricard, Ricard. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, that's that's who that's just who I am. I mean, that's 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 all I need to know. That's <laughs> impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, um, Ricard was on the second episode. We brought him back again for the thirty third episode. So you see how far along we've gotten. We came from having a couple hundred views per episode to a couple thousand views per episode. Now we're up to what, 26, 30,000 views per episode now? Facts. So, <laughs> we, <laughs> we make it moves, baby! And not only that, you know we're on TV every Thursday at 4 o'clock. Um, check your local listings for that. We also throw flowers every na- flyers every now and then so the people can know what it is. Um, so, just to dive into it, there's a lot going on in the world today. Um, some, somebody give a special prayer for Chicago, because Chicago, they said between Friday and now, over 50 people got shot. Um, they said about five of those were, were fatalities. It's all over some kind of gang war that's going on in Chicago, man. People keep Chicago in your praise. It's crazy out there. People kill each other for no reason, especially black people killing black people. That's never cool in my book. It's never been cool and never will be cool. So. People just keep Chicago on your prayers, man. Definitely, and I also want to um, ask the leaders, the, the churches, man, get involved. I know it's it's dangerous, but let me tell you something. There's a lot of um, people who are Crips and Bloods, OGs who are crying out, who need help, who want to make a difference, who want to make a change. And trust me, Chicago, we're going to be coming to you real, real soon. Trust me, man, because I was talking to my man, Elliot, who's out there who's actually doing groundwork, my homegirl Sharona, let's continue to do the work. This is to inspire um, you guys. That's what it's about. Yeah, man, yeah, man. So, what up, Ricardo? What you been up to since the last episode, man? I see you been putting on some weights. I see you been working out. You been in the gym with Bob Carly. Shout out to Carly. <laughs> yeah, you see you guys putting it in. See you with the fresh wolfie. You doing your thing, bro. Tell the people what you've been up to. Tell them a little bit about yourself for those that don't know you, man. Let them know what it is. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to follow what, what Sanders is doing with the, with the beard and everything else like that. But you got, you got the hang time, so I'm... Mercy. You know, it's going to take like a, like a little... Now you good. You got your beard, bro. I mean, I mean, 
Now this is a groom. But you but you you're good, you're in the right you're in the right um you're in the right mind frame, man. Like I said, you got a beard, it's full. Just let it grow. It's a massive to the sound, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Right. What I've been doing lately, I've been using um shea butter in my beard, it's been working all right. Before I had no beard, you know, but it's crazy because once my hair on my head started falling out, the hair on my face started growing. So, you know, right. God's giving, God take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, I saw that, man. Tell them about what, what you've been up to. You went to Canada. Tell people how Canada was. Yeah, I was in, I was in Canada, man. Um, Did you bump into Drake? Nah, I, I didn't bump into Drake, <laughs> but the funny thing is I tried to go to the, uh, the tower. That, that Drake standing on that album. I forgot what the album called. He's from the Sixth the Little Pink. Yeah, 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 yeah. I try to ask people, excuse me, sir, do you know where I can find the tower? I, I, I really said, do you know where I can find the tower that Drake sat on? They looked at me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about, guy. I know, eh? I'm like, I, I, I contrary to popular belief, Canadians are not nice minds admitted. Wow. Yeah, I, I thought they were like very nice. I thought they were going to tell you like the whole direction. They're like, they're being like, uh, yeah, guy, you can just Google the guy. <laughs> All right, guy. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Uh-huh. Yeah, show me you Canadians. I thought you were cool people. Yeah, man. Listen, Toronto, Toronto, I mean, I mean, I, the only thing, the city closest to Toronto that I can compare to the U.S. is Manhattan. It's mm. like, Manhattan and Toronto are two guys that know how to work out. They both got the best press like 225. God, crazy. <laughs> but the difference is, Toronto, he eats clean. You know what I mean? He washes his diet to get brought and he's cut up. <laughs> Manhattan just takes steroids. He's like, oh, I, don't, I don't care. I'm, I'm lifting heavy because I'm taking steroids. That's the, that's the comparison mm-hmm. I can say between the two. Yeah. yeah man, that's that's just, that comparison. Sound kind of personal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I know people that take steroids and it's like, <laughs> I mean, it's like one cheats, the other one is like very nice, or well, like, claim to be nice, but Ooh. very, you know, not as aggressive. That, that's what it is. Toronto's not as aggressive as Manhattan. It's just the light. Ooh. I mean, one doesn't suffer from word babes, like a taxi driver cursing that sort of thing. So that's. That's the comparison. That's the difference between those two. How was the infamous carnival? The infamous carnival that everyone talks about. It, it was. It was. Uh, it was clean. Um, you know, it, it, the funny thing is, it, it didn't have that much trash compared to Houston, the Houston Barbie. So <laughs> I'm not going front. I, I really was like, this is such a nice venue. It's like it's very. Um, how can I say this? Diverse. Um, you know, it's not it's a... That goes in regards to races? Like a lot of you know, different people, different races? Yeah, there's a lot of... It's it's, it's like a rainbow color with with with, with, with a little dash of um, uh, Caribbean music and people oh. gallivanting. And it's just... It was a very, very nice thing to look at. It just watch everybody dance away. And, you know, it was just... I like it. I probably would go back. I felt like Christopher Columbus. I'm like a dude in, dude in New York that's ready to take everybody from New York and show them what Toronto is at. Like, yo, Toronto is where it's at. <laughs> and it's cheaper, too. Something for $20 is literally like $15 in New York. I was like, I'm like, I'm buying this and I'm buying that. Oh, that'd be $20. I'm like, where? Put this on my devil card. Ah, I'm rich. Wow. Yeah, but I'm not too much of my self over. Yeah, man. Shout out to Toronto. Um, so you're saying basically that the infamous carnival lived up to the hype? Yes, it did. I, I can definitely say that. Even though, although I tried to the mic. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I honestly went to like two. Obviously the one in New York and the one in Miami. I've heard, I think Trinidad or is it Barbados is the one that's, that's really, it's like, it's like the, the flagship of, of carnivals from what I heard. So mm. I don't know. Yeah, I'm seeing Rihanna's outfits. Yeah. So going to Barbados, like. Part of me wants to see it, but the other half of me is like, you know, I'm getting up there in age. So it was like, do you really want to just go over there and just, you know, see what it's all about? Mm. Don't you just want to stay home and pay bills like a regular old man? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. It's a 50 50 if I don't want to go there in my, like, you know, as I get older, so whatever. But I've, so far, Canada's look like tonight. Canada's a very nice city. Very nice city. It's compared to New York salary, it's very um, you should manage cheap. It's yeah, it's cheaper than, than New York by far, right? So 
something that's twenty dollars over there. Twenty Canadian dollars is cheaper than twenty U.S. dollars. It's like thirteen dollars a thing. So I'm like, I'm looking at like, yo, make it rain, like buy mm-hmm. this. So it's whatever. But I guess the fourth Canada is it's a great city. So out of the three carnivals you've been to, you said you've been to Miami, yeah. you've been to Canada, and you've been to New York. Out of those three, which one was the best? Canada. Canada well, was the best, Canada back there? Wow. Canada's Buffalo. That's, it's, it's really, I can say it's definitely up there. Because it was clean, you say? It was clean, and it was clean, and I'm trying to, like, make it more PG rated. But, um... Were the women there, the last one approachable? Yes. I can say that, but I'll tell you one thing. You see it, uh, see, if you see Shorty dancing, you gotta line up, up real quick because you're gonna see somebody yeah. really get up on that real quick. Yeah. Like half a second. You're like, oh, okay. And then you try to get up and up. Oh, like literally, like people are like, it's like fresh food out there. They're like, they're ready to dance up anything. I'm like, meat loaf. Meat, exact thing on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, another thing. Um, they don't, have that, they don't have that much Asian folks over there too. That's they don't. They don't. Do, do you have a lot of Haitians in Toronto? They do, but for some reason, I didn't. I didn't well, if that's the case, that means New York and Miami holding it down. That is true. You that's a fact. I changed my mind. <laughs> I might be number one because of that. Yeah. Because I was like, yo. But New York don't play too. I mean, don't it, 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 it's just the only problem is just that um, they always shoot it up. It's just that, it's just that people need to, you know, yeah. every year someone dies. That's I think a fact. A my, my cousin died last year from that. It's gonna be a year now. To be honest, bro, I think I think I think that whole Mardi Gras carnival stuff. I think that's all celebration of the dead. I remember uh, one year I went to one and I went to one the one in Brooklyn, and I remember when I went to that one, um, someone tried to take my life. Matter of fact, like, yeah. They said it was a case of mistaken identity where they felt that um, I was someone else. And so they felt the need to, you know, yeah. um, yeah, do, so what, do, do personally, whatever. And I, so I, I, don't, I don't go. I don't go at all. Um, I usually go to Jersey. If you're trying to go to Metro, you know, let me know. If you want to go out there in Jersey yeah. to see my homegirl Gertie and her family, mm-hmm. which is a beautiful um, situation. If you want to come out there with me, it's nice. Or I'm at TNG restaurant. But, um, if you want to go to Jersey, bro, with me, let me know, bro. Like, it's a definitely a beautiful, beautiful situation for us to go, you know. Um, you know, um, good food and, 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 and you know, yeah, and having a good time, man. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't usually go there at all, to be honest with you. Yeah, man. But, yeah, I remember um, I was there Juve night one year. And then while I was there, literally, like, it was a float of someone dressed up as the devil. Where everybody was covered in red paint. And they would just run around in circles. And it was this big horn devil with red, and I was like, the hell? And then it was people like, you do you know those painter outfits, the like overall thing? Well, yeah, it was people in that, and they had ice picks. They were trying to like stab people, and I was like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm going home. Like I wasn't, I wasn't with all that. Like those things, it's kind of dangerous sometimes. And growing up, your parents tell you stay away from them, and then it's not up until you did that you start to understand why they told you stay away from them. That's so. a fact. Yeah. The funny thing is, when I was in Toronto, I didn't see none of that. That's the thing about it. I didn't see none of that whatsoever. It was just like, I think... Oh, Jesse, Jesse. Oh, he um, But, yeah, um, I mean, maybe I, because I didn't go to any Juve in Canada, but when I went to the parade, it was just, everybody was just in a positive, happy-go-lucky mood. Yeah, and that's a good thing, because sometimes people, they want to, I don't know, I feel like, especially with our people, we grew up in such a way that sometimes we we thrive on negativity like you know you could go to any party of any other race and they won't try to you know basically assassinate each other during a festive event but you go to a black barbecue a black baby shower black party you know by a certain time you got to get up out of there or chances are you might get hit with a couple shells and that's unfortunate man yeah. I remember when we used to club a lot, we used to always, you know, do what we got to do, pop out oh, and be yeah. people, but then we was like, all right, let's leave because the clothes about to take people that out. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to hang out up front, you know? And some people used to hang out up front to get the girls, you know? But, you know, you'd be like, nah, you know what, we out. There's no space for girls in the car anyways. <laughs> Word. That's a fact. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, I want to ask you guys, how you feel about the Trayvon Martin documentary? Um, I didn't have the opportunity to oh, watch it. Oh, I basically saw it. And uh, um, it was very intense. 
it very intense. It's also self-reflective in regards to um, Trayvon's parents didn't understand why was it that when George Zimmerman shot Trayvon, why is it they didn't take him in as a suspect of mm -hmm. killing him? Mm -hmm. That right there was so like shot him at home. When they they basically questioned him and they take him home and everything like they didn't understand that. That right they kinda, you know, basically, you know, took took it to the next level and also too, like they have recordings where there would be like innocent black people in the neighborhood and basically he would call um, at 911 mm. to pursue them and the police officer would tell them to, to, to back off and with the Trayvon situation too they told him to back off that he had no need to be doing that and he still did it um, regardless and everything like that oh, right up top, you know what I'm saying um, also too there's a situation it coincided with that where this happened in Crown Heights the other day, where these people, they um, our, our our queens, they paid for their their uh their 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 um their feet, um their their hair. But I think what happened was they did their nails wrong. They wanted their money back. And the thing is that a couple of Chinese people was hitting them with brooms and everything like that. So they wanna um a yeah, lot. Huh? I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, it happened the other day yeah. in Nordstrom. They threw acid on them, I heard. Yeah, they threw acid as well, too. So my thing is that, you know, listen, man, we as a people, in all honesty, we have to really invest in ourselves um, and, and, each other. and each other, which is very important. This is what we're doing. Um, I do business with, with Patrick Laguerre. I do business with Pop Bibles. I do business with, um, uh, with Ricard. I also help people get jobs with uh, my man... Um, Gary McCullum for drivers and help people get cribs and um, Ricard does the same thing too and my man YB we help people get jobs we have to really own our own Not and the GDs. yeah facts GDs everything and we, we do that you know what I'm saying so we have to we have to really really um, have this black Wall Street because there are people who come into our neighborhood unfortunately they don't respect us. They don't value us. They never and, did and never will. And they treat us like crap. So, you know what I'm saying? We need to really, really have our own and be our own and everything like that because the dollar speaks volumes. And it's very unfortunate, man, to see what, what, um, what happened to them and everything like that in regards to them getting hit by the broom and everything like that. So, you know, they definitely need to get out the neighborhood and everything like that, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, most, most definitely. Because I know there's a couple black-owned... Uh, nail salons around Brooklyn. If it's, uh, I think I got a couple of addresses that I'm looking for them, but okay. you know, instead of instead of you know giving money out to somebody that doesn't support you, why don't just give it to some, give it to somebody that looks kind of like you, and at the same time not only looks kind of like you, you know, they pretty much support your cause and probably will never disrespect you like that, like with brooms and everything. Like that. And also, too, we need to be, um, you know, and our people just need to be a little bit more professional. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to LeBron because. He's one of the few people who wasn't just talking about it. He actually did it. On the broad, opened up a uh, own public school within his neighborhood, same the neighborhood that he grew up in. Yep. He's providing free tuition, free transportation, free food, free GD programs for the parents, and he's also paying college tuition for all the kids that want to go to college. So this is something monumental, you know. Yeah. Facts. And he's doing something unprecedented, and leave it to the president to be a hater. That's a fact. President. Donald Trump was like, oh, that he liked LeBron. I mean, he liked Jordan better than LeBron. Yep. Meanwhile, what has Jordan done for the community? Somebody tell me. Yeah, I don't know, man. The thing is that Jordan's been for himself. Unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? Um, he's not the one that built prisons. It was a white guy named Michael Jordan who built prisons. So we're going to get that, <laughs> that clear and everything like that. So it's not the Michael Jordan who built prison. But like I said, you know, um, you know what a person does with his money is a lot of, about themselves. There's nothing wrong, you know, you get your sippies, I want that, you know what I'm saying? The driver, I want that, you know what I'm saying? Having 300 sneakers, I want that, you know what I'm saying? You know, all, you know, having 400 suits, I want that. Nothing wrong with, you know, the gold chains, the watches. There's nothing wrong with that. 300 sneakers though, bro? With, bro, that's, I want that. <laughs> yeah? Right now, you I got... to wear one pair a day. Right, but one pair a day. Me, I got two right now, yeah? I'm trying to level up, boss up, yeah? Right, so, yeah, at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with wanting things that make you feel good about yourself. Nothing wrong with that, especially if you're not worshipping it. However, you know, as Christians, we are obligated to give back and to help the least of these. 
Because the Bible tells you that, you know what I'm saying? When I was in prison, did you visit me? When I was hungry, did you feed me? When I didn't have um, clothes, did you clothe me? And, and, and these things are the essentials, you know, and I respect LeBron for doing what he has done. Um, and I respect him because before the school has even built, even um, got built, he would make sure that he would put a lot of kids to college and everything like that. He would also speak against injustice and everything like that. So I feel like him and Colin Kaepernick are like the modern day Muhammad Ali. You see what I'm saying? Because they're speaking their mind and everything like that. And and, and I'm very disappointed with the NFL how they want to take Colin out in regards to um, not putting him in Madden, not you know re referring him and everything like that. It just lets you know that you know we have to support Colin. They it, took his name out the song and that's that. crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And, and 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 all he did was just speak about something that is wrong. You know what I'm saying? He's not speaking against um 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 you know, the national anthem, you know what I'm saying? He's speaking against basically something that is really going on in regards to, like, why is it that, you know, cops treat black people different from white people? Why is it that there is um, people who allow um, the swastika to um, to exist in this country? Or, 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 or the KKK or neo-Nazis, those are terrorist groups. You see what I'm saying? So. We have to face reality, you know what I'm saying? And this is what he's bringing out. And because he's speaking the truth, it's a problem. It shouldn't be a problem, you see what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, they not only just hate black people, they hate Jews, they hate Asians, you see what I'm saying? Because they know already, you know, the majority is not going to be them anymore and everything like that. And plus, like my man Nas and MP Diddy says, in, 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 in the first song of the album, um, they're scared of us. They're scared of us. They're scared of us, and we're not we're not gonna go down low to to what they did to us. However, you're not gonna come to our neighborhoods and and bomb our neighborhoods or scare our children away. You know what I'm saying? Because we're not gonna take those beatings. You know, mm. we do believe in Django. You know Django? Forget what Django did. Remember Django? <laughs> Django with Jamie Fox. Yeah. Yeah, but I think a lot of people. Um, I don't know if Django was a real person or not. But I'm giving us. Yeah, you know what I mean. But Nat Turner was a real person. Fox. He did something similar to that, and. And, and, and John Brown too, another one too. Yeah, and the way they volleyed Nat Turner where, where they flaked him, which basically means that they skinned him alive after beating him and whipping him for hours and burning him on different parts of his body. Then they skinned him while he was barely still alive. They, they, they used his skin to make purses, wallets. Oh my um, God. Anything that you could think of that's made out of leather, they used his skin to make it as a trophy, basically. Like, this is the guy that that stood up against white supremacy and this is what happens when you do so. So they, they, they used him as an example. So a lot of people, they, they were ter petrified after this, you know? Yeah. So they were terrorized, like yeah. traumatized, you know? So a lot of people fear that consequence. In today's modern world, a lot of people are afraid to lose their jobs or lose their position in society or lose the respect of certain people or to lose certain privileges. So therefore, they keep their mouth shut, and because of that, a lot of people suffer. In this day, in this now, in this day and age, a lot of people are afraid to stand up and speak because of the cost. You know, yeah. Kelly Kaepernick lost his job, he lost his friends, he lost his team, he lost his career. He, he lost a lot. You know, but he has his self-respect. He has his self-respect, and he and he helped donate over a million dollars to much needed organizations and funds yeah. that were needed for people of color yep. but as we look at it a lot of people the same color as him or darker they spoke out against him you know? be like that be like this the uncle toms and that's the situation and, 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 and that's our biggest fight the fight within ourselves because the old african proverb say if there's no enemy within then those outside cannot come in to hurt us wow. you know but if the inside is weak then there is no defense. And I feel like that's where the biggest conflict within our people comes because we're so easily divided among small things, you know? Light skin, dark skin, tall, short, bald headed, Afro, you know, foolishness, Brownsville, East New York, Canarsi, East Flatbush, West Flatbush, you know, nonsense like that. You know, Chicago, Chicago New York, Florida, you know? Facts. Old nigga, young nigga, short nigga, tall nigga. <laughs> Still nigga. That's a fact. But everybody say that. No, no, we not. 
but to a next man of the next race, he see you all the same. All the same. Like, I'm going to give you an example, right? Um, last week I was in the DR, and then my whole life I've been hearing, oh, the, the Dominicans hate Haitians, the Dominicans hate Haitians, don't go to DR, they kill Haitians, blah, blah, this and that. So I went to DR, man, and the resort that I stayed at, I, I only saw one of the brother, when I say brother, I mean African-American, my complexion. They, they were Dominicans, my complexion there as well. But a brother like, you know, from America, similar to myself, there was only one other guy. Everybody else was, you know, of a different race. Um, the people of the resort treated us with the utmost respect and love. The guests, however, didn't really associate with us, you know. Um, when we went into town, we stuck out like a sore thumb, you know, me being as dark as I am and... <laughs> My wife being as light as she is, and they looking at us like, "What's going on with these two? What's going on here?" As we walk through the city, you know. Um, but after a few days there, I realized that a lot of dark skin, quote unquote, the Dominicans were actually Haitians. And then I thought, this is the same island, the island of Hispaniola, you know. You know, it's a, it's, it's a little road, a little bridge, or whatever it is, or a little river that divides the two. So it was so many Haitians, and the Haitians were providing services to the, the Dominicans, basically. The Haitians were, they're Mexicans. Yeah. They, they were building up walls, doing landscaping, doing taxi on motorcycles, things of that nature. And a lot of Haitians, when you came in contact with them, they spoke Spanish to you. And, and I'm like, huh? And I'm like, wait, you Haitian? They're like, yeah. And then, then they speak Creole. So I'm like, yo, that, that was the difference, you know? Um, but there wasn't really that big of a culture shock outside of that. It was more so, other people were more surprised to see us than I was surprised to see them. Because, you know, I worked for almost two years in the South Bronx, so I was used to the Dominicans, you know. Even some Dominicans out there, they asked me, oh, are you from the Bronx? Because almost every Dominican knows someone from the Bronx. I'm like, no, I'm not from the Bronx. I'm actually from Brooklyn. And they're like, okay, cool, cool. But I met a couple cool people that showed me a lot of love. Shout out to everybody. And... Even out there, you know, I show love to the people too. Like my wife and I, we went grocery shopping because we had like a little full apartment with kitchen and everything. So we cooked our own food. But when we was leaving, we had some extra food left over. And we asked the staff at the resort if they liked it, if they would like the food because it was uncooked food. It was still fresh. I was like, yeah, we'll take it and give it to other staff members. So even then, I showed them how Philly, and you know, he said, he said, God bless you, sir. Like, you got a good heart. And that's one thing that that no matter what country you, you at, what color you are, where you at, and on, on this planet Earth, love is love. Love don't have no color, love don't have no shape, love don't have no location. So shout out to the Dominicans, and shout out to everybody at the, at the, at the, at the Soto Grande of Joy Resort that showed me so much love. Que lo que mi gente, mi corazón. Gracias. I don't know what that means, but it sounds very uh, prosperous. No, I said, what up, my homies? Um, you have a special place in my heart. See. Si. <laughs> um, I heard that also, to going back to um, Trayvon, I heard part two is coming out tonight, so definitely um, stay tuned with, with that. And like I said, man, let's protect ourselves. Let's, let's, let's um, arm ourselves. And let's really hold each other accountable because, like I tell you, they're, they're, they're out there. You know what I'm saying? And also, let's also get our people into positions of power who will speak against white supremacy and also racism and everything like that, which is very, very key and essential and everything like that. Mm. Um, also, I want to shout out Mrs. Trump for speaking against um, 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 her husband. <laughs> um, um, I want to shout out, you know, she's not bad. You Just know what I'm saying? She's not, she's, not, she's not bad in regards to, um, you know, she's definitely an opposite. You know, um, she side. might be smarter than him. Yeah, she is smarter than him. You know what I'm saying? So kudos to her and everything like that. In regards to, in regards to that, so I want to give her a shout out because truly, man, you know, she speaks against bullying. You gotta give credit when credit is due and everything like that. You know, she speaks against cyberbullying and she speaks against a lot of things and she gives hints that she doesn't approve everything that her husband speak of. Okay, now I want to speak about this. Um, I want to talk about basically um, what happened in regards to the pastors going to see Trump. And I want to basically... Which pastors was this? Um, this was, um, this was, 
I think Friday. Which pastor? John Gray. It's a couple of big bishops mm -hmm. that went to go see Trump. And there were people that were kind of like upset about that, that they went. And John Gray said basically that, um, you know, a lot of prophets spoke to, the, the, you know, a prophet spoke to Nebuchadnezzar. Um, um, uh, Moses spoke to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Daniel spoke to, you know what I'm saying? Moses lived in the house of Pharaoh. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So, like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, just because you're in the same table with a person, it's best that you speak to positions of power and everything like that. And I think um, if I was there, if I had the privilege of being there, I, I, I would tell Trump, listen, man, if, if, if we're going to, because like I said, it's, it's all about bargaining. You see what I'm saying? It's all about bargaining. Um, I would tell him, listen, look, what you have in the table, let's cut, you know, a business, a, a deal, not for me, but for my people, you know what I'm saying? And I think that, that they just need to be a little bit vocalized just a little bit more instead of just taking a, a situation which is going up there and not getting really, really guarantees and everything like that. And, you know, and just speaking out respectfully, like, sir, all due respect, you know, you, you could love a little bit more better. You could do things a little bit more better. You you, you, you promote white supremacy. You, you promote um, 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 misogynist messages and everything like that. So I think it's very, very important that leaders speak against in a respectful way. And then because you mean with a leader, you know, I don't, I don't agree with, I don't, I didn't agree with everything that Obama did. Mm. I don't agree with the gay marriage thing. You see what I'm saying? But you could always sit down and basically sit down. You, you basically sit down and just talk to the leader. You know, he, he, I mean, he's the president of the United States. We can disagree. We can disagree, but we can still sit in the table like, listen, we can cut a deal in regards to what can we do for our people. And I think that's very important and essential, and that's what I have to say. Mm. Um, let me see. I think sometimes in order for a change to be met, you must speak to the person that is doing the wrong. Because sometimes people do things and they don't see the error of their ways. I don't, I don't think he sees it. So I would say that. Um, the one thing I could be honest about prior to Donald Trump actually being president or running for president, um, I didn't hear anything about him being a racist. Um, it wasn't up until he started running for president and he became president that he started talking about he's a racist. The other day I was watching The Fresh Prince and he was actually on the episode when he was going to buy the house, when he was going to buy a family house and everything. And I was like, I was like, wait. He was on this show, and then I was starting to see that Donald Trump was on a lot of different shows. A lot of rappers, a lot of, a lot of 50 Cent yeah, with him. A lot of, yeah. a lot of rappers used to, he used to pay rappers to hang out with him to make him look cool when he was just trying to be a celebrity yeah. person to get money. Yeah. I think he associates himself with, I guess, the alt-right or the evangelicals or whatever title they would like to use because that... Those are the people that take that make up majority of America, and those are the people that voted him into office. Those those people are mostly America. So he forces us to see America for what it is. So I would not put all the blame on him. I would more so put it on America no, because agree. he's the face of America. So if he's the one that's the face of America. You gotta look at the people that's behind that face. You know, we all have to. No, I, I, I agree. I, I feel like under Obama. Under Obama we saw it even more of it than nobody. I feel like people want to deny that this country is 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 um like was built on the backs of slaves. Yeah, on the fact, you know what I'm saying? Back. You know. So I think I think I think that it's it's just it's just a hard reality for people to swallow and everything that are still shocked and everything like that. Like my man Will Smith said, like we all knew that racism existed. It's just that now it's um. It's it's on camera, so it's like <laughs> that's the age that we live in and everything like that. So pretty much that's what it is and everything. Yo, how do you feel about these people? You know, these white people calling cops on black people. What's with that? I have to have to ask that. What's your thoughts on that? Yo, you've been quiet for the whole time. I'm listening, man. This is this is good. What's your, what's, your thoughts, what's your thoughts on that, bro? Like cops. I mean, uh, white people calling cops on black people for no reason, bro. I mean, you know, it's like. 
somebody that looks different from them, they they have this this implicit bias of somebody that looks different from them. So it was like if you're an old white lady, you look at a a black person like based on what you see on TV, you never had a real interaction with a black person. So you have a negative idea of what he's doing. So him doing something out of the ordinary, you think is negative. So you're gonna call him, and it's just, it's just not fair because that just shows how ignorant that you know that lady is, and it's just. It's not fair, and it's it's getting to a point where you can call somebody, and it and it'll lead to that other person getting hurt, and that's that that's pretty much the problem with that. And then, and, and, you know, I, one person can't change it, but one person can have the idea, translate it to another, and another, and work as a team so we can hopefully eliminate this system that we're in. We know this system, the system of white supremacy, where everybody that doesn't look like us have this insecurity that you know somebody that looks different like different from us or different from them they always think that they're either going to take something from you know from us or it, it, it's like they, they they're just inherently devilish or something like that this is not fair but i feel like there's racism amongst us too as people of color that's a fact like i said earlier about the haitians versus the dominicans the dominicans versus puerto ricans Haitians versus Jamaicans, Jamaicans versus Haitian, you know, down south Negroes versus um, up north Negroes, you know, west coast Negroes versus east coast Negroes, you know, it's a whole bunch of nonsense amongst us, you know, you know, even the Mexicans versus the um, Guatemalans or the Honduras or, you know, the Central American people, Mm -hmm. it's all kind of foolishness that goes amongst us, you know, and we can use Africa as an example where where the Tutsis and the and I forgot the other tribe uh, where yeah. like they, there were two different tribes and they were beefing with each other and they allowed apartheid to happen where another race was able to come in and basically eradicate a huge amount of them you know yeah, like I, I think I think all of that falls into that system that system really really like not only gave into their brains it, it, it pretty much fell into to, to their brains too because it's like obviously if if you've been, if you seen a projection of, you know, the dominant society being beautiful or being rich, obviously if you look different from them, it might give you that that brain, that mindset that damn, I'm not pretty, I'm not beautiful, he's not pretty, he's not beautiful, I'm not, I'm gonna care, I'm gonna care less of him just as much as they care less of him, so I'm gonna fight him, I'm gonna kill him because his life ain't worth more than mine. That's pretty much what, you know, somebody from a hood probably thinks, and that's all of that falls into that system of white supremacy and all that. And sadly, that's the rhetoric that's going on today, yeah. where we don't value ourselves, and most of the time they justify it by by using black on black crime, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's the sad part. But hey, that's we can continue talking about it. But you know, I feel like the change will come when we decide to change and decide to work as a people. Perfect example. We've been promoting this diaper drive for a week now, and only one person donated. And that person only and that. Well, we can't say that person only donated five dollars because five dollars is better than nothing. Um, and I got over five thousand friends. You got over five thousand friends. That's so if they each gave a dollar, we would have had ten thousand by now. You know. That's a fact. That's a fact. And so that's, that's where fact. that's where we at. That's and a fact. That's a fact. If you want to get here with the sad reality, that's it right there. We don't support each other even when we're doing something positive. That's a fact. Instead, we sit back and wait for them to fail. But when when, when they succeed, you're like, wow, you did that? You did that? Mm-hmm. And then what they do, they hate on you. So, it's always like that, so bro. Sometimes it, it goes as far as they try to sabotage you. Sometimes it be your own people, man. Right. They try to sabotage you. <laughs> yeah, I have to give you a shout out. Um... How you feel about the change, man? I saw that there's a lot of more people at the church now. Yeah. Um, how was how was the vibe? Like, so I wasn't there for the for the inaugurational ceremony that occurred Saturday. But shout out to the new um, Herman Herman SDA Church, um, Mount Herman. Um, so it was um, Jordan River that was originally Friends of Jesus and Laodice SDA Church. We merged with um, C Shot SDA, Guild God SDA, and Elim SDA Church, and so we're one big church now. We're working on buying a million dollar building, so keep us in your prayers. And you know, um, well, I'm still the leader of the youth, so yeah. that's cool. Now I have more responsibility, which is okay. I mean, God never gives you more than you can handle. But I think 
with all of this combined energy, I feel like we can do something great. You know, with the right leadership and the right guidance, and if we put God first, we could do something great. We could continue to do positive things. We could keep the same energy. And we could do wonderful, beautiful things. When it was just my church, when it was just seven or eight of us in the youth, we did big things. Then when we merged, we did even bigger things, you know? Um, Join the River, along with the Real Word, and other churches, yeah. along with the Franco-Haitian Youth Federation, yeah. we did awesome things. And now that we're this even bigger church, we have to do great things, you know? We have to. We have to. So I'm going to try my best. I'm going to work the best with my team and the youth and the church and the community. And we're going to do the best of our ability. We're going to do great things, you know? That's all we can do. Big things are going to done, though. Um, God willing, I'll preach... Um, at least one or two more sermons for the rest of the year. Hopefully you guys show up. Um, so I'll see you there. More details to come. Support the real word. We're trying to give away 60,000 diapers to the people in need. That's www.gofundme.com backslash the real word. That's www.gofundme.com backslash the real word. Like word of God, the word of Christ. Like the word that's behind me right now. Like word. Word to the mother bird. Definitely. Definitely. Um, we're about to close, right? We good, right? Let me go a little bit more. Um, what do you think about the bigger church? Because you seen it when it was small, so it's way bigger yeah, I think now. it's beautiful. I think it's a beautiful situation. I think um, definitely, we definitely want to have a concert um, with that situation and everything like that. So um, over there, and um, yeah, I'm just proud of what you guys are doing. I pray that the Lord may um, bless you guys and keep you guys in all your endeavors and. Move forward, man. Move to, forward. To be honest, guys, God is great, man. I remember when it was only 20, 30 of us in that church. Now it's like 300 of us. So, you know, to come from 30 to 300. It's 300 people now? What's yeah, more? About, about 300 because they ordered three, 300 chairs. Okay. Last week and they said it was packed. Like, there was no place to sit. And if they could fill 300 chairs, then there had to be more than 300 people. That's, I'm a, guessing. that's a fact. So, so, yeah, you know, we started from 30 and now we close to 300 if not more than 300 so you know and you already know 300 people could do great things you've seen what the spartans did imagine what some haitians could do you know we get yeah how much people you have now um last time i checked it before we had over 40 young people total that's including the younger children that's including from age age 10 to about wow. 20, 28, wow. I think I was the oldest, 28, 29, no, no, Rich is the oldest, shout out to Richard Paul, he's the oldest, um, so right now we probably at like 45, 50, so we had a good amount. So, so now, it's, it's more now? Yeah, I mean, remember, we merged with three other churches, so the youth from those churches are part of ours now too. So, 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 but you, you said you had 50 before? We had like 30 something, close to 40. So when the other church came, it's like 50. Uh, around 50. So you guys have like 10 No, no, no. We had 30 something, including Jordan River. I'm talking okay, about. Okay, okay, okay. We had so, around so, 30 something. So you should have like at least 100 young people then? No, like around 50. Around, I'll, I'll say maybe 50 because the, the other churches did not have as many young people as my church Okay, did. facts. So, yeah. Because you know how some youth. Because the other churches we'd be merging with were smaller churches. Facts. So you know how sometimes when your church is small, you see they're not doing much. Young people like to get up and go other places. Facts. Hopefully, my thing was always to bring that feeling back, you know? Even with my original church, when I became youth leader, a lot of people came back, you know? Facts. So I'm trying to get the people from the other churches to come back, too. Like, y'all seen the wedding, y'all seen the baby shower, two, three hundred people there, too, you know? Facts. It worked. So... We, we got that energy. We can do it, man. We, we can do it. We got we, we got smart people. We got good minds. We got good engineers and architects, you know. And we got the Lord, so we could do whatever and we could do everything, you That's know. That's a fact. We just got to put the proper mechanics. Mm. Don't let petty things get in between us. Keep it real, you know. Do, do not be greedy or selfish. Don't go after gain or, or, or boast and things of that nature, you know. Mm. And we should be good. That's a fact. And if anybody's on the wrong side or or or, or you know they slipping, we gonna catch you. Just put you down exactly. You already know what we did last time, so I ain't gotta say much more. That's a fact.
That's a fact. That's beautiful. Shout out to everybody watching. I see Angie Benjamin. I see Jay Carter. I see Eric Hervé, Gene Baptiste, as usual. Shout out to Eric, you know. So we're just building a movement, man. I feel like we could do great, great things with the proper mechanics, you know. I just pray that the Lord order our steps and that we're able to do great things um, with the church, with this ministry, the Real Word Ministries, you know. Shout out to Funerals Don't Count. And everybody and everybody that's doing great things, I hope you guys all do great and awesome things, you know. Because it's not just about one person. It's about leaving a legacy that will outlive you, you know, all the time. Eric said, as usual, of course. Shout out to you, brother. You always here every week. So we can't ever forgive you. One time when you in Brooklyn, you know, you got to come up and we're going to have you here live. We got to see waiting for you. So you already know. Shout out to Eric. So that's about it. We can hear closing thoughts. Let's get it. Let's support each other. Let's support each other, man. That's the word, man. Let's support each other. That's right. What about you, Ricardo? Hold your thoughts. Uh, Speaking to the mic, brother. Damn. Um, <laughs> Maybe people are sort of powerful. Sound powerful? Yeah, man. Okay. Um, well, what's that black guy's name that plays the gatekeeper in Thor? The only black guy in Thor. What's his name? I forgot his, I forgot his name. Eldris. Uh, uh, that's how that's what you look like right now. Uh what the word. Um I guess you never get what you deserve. You get you only get what you're able to leverage, which is God mm. at this point. Mm. So you use that leverage to get what you need to get. Mm. Um I believe that everything and anything is possible. All of us here on this panel is living proof of this, you know? Um, oftentimes we doubt ourselves, but whatever we want, we can manifest. I, as an example, um, from where I used to be, from where I am now. And I thank God, and I thank my wife for encouraging me to, to travel. So now I'm seeing the world and how other people live. And at times, I'm very well blessed, you know? And it's one thing to get love in Brooklyn. It's one thing to get love in Kanasi. Right. It's one thing to get love in Crown Heights or at your church or in your home, right? But you go to a different country and no, and no one even knows you. And it's people like every day when you wake up, they waiting for you to come outside, say well, what up to you and shit like, and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. That's a different kind of love, you know? <laughs> and they not even asking you for no money or nothing. Like, they just want to chill with you, you know? Like, stuff like that, you know? Where, where you could go into a town where no one knows you, you know? And you could just relax and just walk through and everybody show you love, you know, putting hands on you, you know, and robbing you or disrespecting you. It's because of the energy that you put out. It's not only energy that you put out here, but it's everywhere, you know. I want to touch a million while touching a million. You understand what I'm saying? I want to touch that million and I want to touch a million people. Like we started this show with just a couple hundred. Right now we are at 20, 30,000 right now. One day I want to touch a million. One day I want a million followers. One day I want a million friends. One day I want a million dollars. And I'm going to change a million lives, you know? Before, if you would have told me one day I would have, I would have this voice, I would have never believed you. But today I don't touch tens, I don't touch hundreds, but I touch thousands. One day we're going to touch millions. I guarantee it. I'm speaking into existence, you know? And we're too great to stop right now, you know? So I thank you all for watching. I ask you one more time to donate, www.gofundme.com backslash the real word, W-O-R-D, the real word, that's GoFundMe backslash the real word. There's a flyer on this page, there's a flyer on my personal page, you can share that, please. And, and, just, and, and I want to give a shout out to all those who have been doing the video so far. Like I said, donate to the cause. Like I said, we're going to let you know information in regards to the concert. Um, it should cost about how much? Ten, fifteen dollars? Because for free food? Sure, why not? Fifteen dollars or ten dollars? No matter. You know, ten to fifteen dollars. We'll let you know about that, and um, we're gonna make it happen. And we also bring an offering because it's gonna be food and drinks. And let, let's get it, man. We're gonna let, we're gonna keep you posted. We we have a lot of work to. We're gonna make that happen. Yeah, man. So we back on TV this Thursday at four p.m. You know, check the local listings. I'll put the post on later. Um. And just thank you all guys for supporting. Shout out to God for blessing us and helping us to continue with the same energy. Helping us to do great things, man. We blessed and highly favored.
So shout out to Sanders for being consistent. Shout out to Ricard Carter Sean. Since junior high, since two L's, we already been down. <laughs> you know? But we ain't take no L's in this game called life, man, because we're champions. You already know it. <laughs> so, Pastor Sanders, close out with a prayer. We'll be back next week. Our Father God, we pray that you may continue to keep us, strengthen us in your presence and your love and your bosom. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Shout out to 211, John Wilson. Shout out to Ms. Butez, the math teacher. We gave her hell back yeah, in the days. All, all right, guys. <laughs> so we'll see you next week, all right? Well, wow. <laughs>